What up everybody? Back again here with our negative number unit. Today we're looking at negative numbers in real life, part one. So let's dive under the water and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to represent positive and negative numbers in real world context and explain the meaning of zero in each situation. So let's get started with our math vocabulary our math vocabulary today today we're talking about temperature and elevation now most of you know what temperature is temperature is the measure of heat in an object and it's measured in degrees that's a non-scientific definition of that word but it will work for us and elevation elevation is the height of an object above or below sea level and we'll look at that in just a second but let's start with temperature. A couple things that are gonna be important about temperature questions, okay? So temperature can be measured in Celsius. Celsius is the metric measurement for temperature, um, basically anywhere other than the United States and a couple other countries, they're going to measure the temperature in Celsius, or you can measure it in Fahrenheit, which is always a fun word to try to spell. Now, here's the key things about how the number lines work for temperature. As you get warmer, you move up the number line, right? And as you move colder, you move down the number line. And I like to use a vertical number line for these because it looks like the thermometer, right? And you also have the medical thermometer that might be digital that you can see right here. But typically when you look at thermometers, you're gonna see the ones that go up and down. It has the red line of mercury moving up and down. They probably don't make it out of mercury anymore, but that's okay. All right. If you look at these, you'll notice that they have the same intervals, but this is different than the ones we did last lesson. Instead of counting by one in each dash or mark on the number line equaling one unit, they all equal 10 units now. Okay. And even though they measure temperature and even though they both measure it in degrees, so you could say 40 degrees or 40 degrees, 40 degrees in Celsius is much different than 40 degrees in Fahrenheit. So let's start by looking at zero. For zero degrees Celsius, and this is why most of the world uses it, if you, when you're at zero, this is your freezing temperature. Okay. <laughs> And so if it was zero degrees Celsius, that's when the rain would start turning into snow or the water would start freezing into an ice cube. For Fahrenheit, it's in between 30 and 40 over here is the freezing point, okay? And so if you're below freezing, you could be at 20 degrees, which would be below freezing, but that's not quite at zero. If you get to zero for Fahrenheit, this is when your nose hair starts to freeze when you're breathing in through your nose. Okay, I lived in Chicago for a while and it gets so cold when you breathe in through your nose, literally your boogers and nose hairs would freeze inside your nose. So these number lines measure it a little bit differently. Celsius, of course, makes more sense because if you're below zero, that means you're freezing. But it's important to have a little bit of background knowledge for the questions you might see throughout this unit. Now that we've covered a little bit about temperature, let's move on to elevation. Okay, so here is a picture of the sea. Now, when you talk about elevation, and you might not have heard this before, but you're referring to zero being the average height of the sea, okay? And so, I don't even know how they figure it out. It's probably like every five years, they take all the averages of where the sea is, and they calibrate that to being zero. So when you hear something like Mount Everest being, I don't know, five miles tall, that's five miles above sea level, okay? This is where they start counting. When you talk about swimming 10 feet under the water, right? That's 10 feet below sea level. So when you're talking about elevation, zero can be referred to as sea level, right? So if you look right here at this shark, it's at negative 80 feet. So if you're talking about elevation, you could say negative 80, or you could say 80 feet below sea level. There's two different ways to say negative when you're talking about elevation. If you wanted to say positive 80, you could just say that the ship was 80 feet tall, right? Or you could say it was 80 feet above sea level. So when you're talking about elevation, zero is represented by sea level. Let's take a look at an I do problem. So our I do problem is about temperature. It says it is currently 64 degrees Fahrenheit 
in North Carolina and negative 5 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica. Where is it warmer? And so we, first of all, I'm going to do my size check. I'm going to say it is warmer blank. All right. And we talked about our temperature and our number line. The further you move up the number line, the warmer it is. And the further you move down the number line, the colder it is, right? Or the So North Carolina is above zero and Antarctica is below zero, which means North Carolina is further up the number line. So we're going to say it is warmer in North Carolina. I'm just going to put in C for that. So again, thinking about how temperature works. If you are Further up, you're warmer. If you're further down, you're colder. Our we do problem says use an integer or a whole number that's either negative or positive, or it could be zero, to represent 40 feet below sea level. Use an integer to represent 40 feet above sea level and place them on the number line. So the first thing I want to do is I want to write down my integers. If I want to go 40 feet below sea level, I know that that's going to be a negative number. So I need to say negative 40 because I want to go 40 feet below zero, taking me into my negatives. My negative sign is the direction that I'm moving away from zero. Then it says use an integer to represent 40 feet above sea level. And again, above sea level is going to refer to the positive numbers on my number line. And so I'm just going to write a 40. I don't need to write the positive sign because if it's not negative, then we make the inference that it's positive. That's a math convention that we talked about in our first negative number lesson. Now we need to place them on the number line. So I'm going to start at zero. My negative 40 tells me I'm going to be moving away from zero. 10, 20, 30, 40. So right here is going to be my negative 40. And then I want to put positive 40 on there, which means I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to move up the number line. 10, 20, 30, 40. And now I've put both of those integers on my number line. Thank you so much for checking us out today. Really all we want to do is give you some examples and give you some background knowledge that some of us don't have when referring to real life examples of using negative numbers. This knowledge is going to come in handy throughout the rest of our unit. We hope you'll join us for those lessons. Check out our negative number song. If you have not done so already, we would love for you to subscribe, like, and comment on the video. Let us know you're watching. We love to hear from you guys. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.